questions 11 through 20 on the 2011 grade 8 AMC 8. The graph below shows the number of minutes studied by both Asha Blackbar and Sasha Graybar in one week. On the average, how many more minutes per day did Sasha study than Asha? So what we have to do in this question is first add up, take an average, and then compare. So for Asha, if you look at this uh, graph that they've given you, it's 60 plus 90 plus 100 plus 80 plus 70. And of course, we have to divide all that by 5. And if we do, you get 80. That's her average. Sasha, those numbers are going to be 70 plus 80, just looking at the graph, plus 120, plus 110, plus 50, and of course we divide again by 5, and when we do, we get 83, sorry, 86. So comparing 86 to 80, obviously, Sasha studied 6 minutes more per day on average. So number 11, the answer is A. Angie, Bridget, Carlos, and Diego are seated at a random around a square table, one person to a side. What is the probability that Angie and Carlos are seated opposite each other? Well, there's a few ways of doing this. The first way is, of course, to write out all 24 possible scenarios, right? Because there's four people, A, B, C, D, and you're going to have four for the first one, three choices for the second, two for the third seat, and one final choice for the fourth seat, and that's 24. 24 is not that many, um, but there's a quicker way, and that is noticing that if you have a round table, the only way that Angie and Carlos will be seated opposite each other is if they are one apart, right? That's the only way. So for example, if you got this table, and Angie is here, and Carlos is here, then the other two Bridget and Diego obviously have to be there and there. Now if I write it out in a flat way like this, it just means that Bridget is here and Diego is here. Does that make sense? So basically this is how you would do it in a quick way. If this is the case, we have only two choices for this, either B or D, and the remaining one choice goes here. So this is fixed, this is fixed, so it's just two times one, two possible ways of doing that. And the two possible ways are very easy to illustrate. It's either A, B, C, D, or it's A, D, C, B, just in case. Now, that's not the only case of the 24. There's also a couple others. The other one is if you have A here and C here. That would also make them uh, opposite each other. And the very same way, you got two choices for that seat and one choice for this. Again, that's two. The other way, if A is here and C is there, again, two choices for that seat, one choice for that, we got two. And the final way is when A is here and C is there, two choices for that seat, one choice is for that, two. So these are the scenarios. So there's eight of those, and the total was 24. So eight over 24 is the answer to this question. In lowest terms, of course, that's one over three. So number 12, the answer is B. Two congruent squares ABCD and PQRS have side length 15. They overlap to form the 15 by 25 rectangle AQRD shown. What percent of the area of rectangle AQRD is shaded? So this is 15, and this is 15, and they're saying that this whole length is 25. Okay? Now we want to know this length, this length, and that length. I don't know those yet. So I'll call this x, and this we can call y and y. So immediately we know that x plus y is equal to 15, right? Because from here to here is the side of a square, and the side is 15. And we also know that x plus 2y is equal to 25. That's the entire side of that rectangle. So these two equations we can easily solve. We can just subtract them. You can, if this is 2 and this is 1, you can just say 2 minus 1. 
And if you do that, you just get y is equal to 10 very quickly. And then we can substitute that back into here to get x is equal to 5. So they want the percentage of the area of the rectangle that's shaded. So the shaded region, that dimensions are 5 times x, or sorry, 15 times x, and x is 5. The entire rectangle dimensions are 15 times 25. So this is our required percentage. The 15's cancel, the 5 over 25 just reduces to 1 over 5. And 1 over 5 in terms of a percentage is 20%. So number 13, the answer is C. There are 270 students at Colfax Middle School where the ratio of boys to girls is 5 to 4. There are 100 in 80 students at Winthrop Middle School where the ratio of boys to girls is 4 over 5. The two schools hold a dance and all students form both schools from both schools attend. What fraction of the students at the dance are girls? So 270 at the first high school and the ratio of boys to girls is 5 over 4. So 5 plus 4 is 9 so take 270 divided by 9 and you get 30 and then we can just use that to figure out how many. 5 times 30 is 150, 4 times 30 is 120. So that is the number of boys to girls in terms of the actual numbers. Now at the other high school, very similarly, we've got a scenario of 180 students and their ratio of boys to girls is 4 to 5. So again, take 180 divided by 9, which is 4 plus 5, and you get 20, and then I can do 4 times 20, which is 80, and 5 times 20, which is 100, and that's my ratio. So in total, we have 150 and 80, so 230 boys, and we've got 120 plus 100, 220 girls. And what they want is the fraction of all the students that are girls. So all the students is going to be 230 plus 220, which is 450, and the girls are 220. So this is the fraction. In lowest terms, it's 22 over 45. So that would mean 14. The answer is C. How many digits are in the product 4 to the 5th times 5 to the 10th? 4 to the 5th times 5 to the 10th. Well, 4 to the 5th is 2 to the 2 to the 5th, and then the 5 to the 10th doesn't change. 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 5, these two you can multiply to give you 10. And then now, since the exponents are the same, we can combine the bases like that. And 2 times 5 is just 10, so that brings you to 10 to the power of 10. Now remember, 10 to the power of 1 is just 10. 10 to the power of 2 is 1 followed by two zeros. 10 to the power of 3 is 1 followed by three zeros, and so on. So 10 to the power of 10 would be 1 followed by 10 zeros. 10. Like that. So how many digits are there? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 digits in that number. So number 15. The answer is D. Let A be the area of a triangle with sides length 25, 25, and 30. Let B be the area of a triangle with sides 25, 25, 40. What is the relationship between A and B? So we've got a triangle of some sort of shape. And it's obviously isosceles. And then we've got another one that has a very similar shape. And let's label this. So we've got 25, 25, and 30. And this one is 25, 25, and 40, like that. So if you draw perpendiculars for each of these, like that, we can figure out the areas. When you draw the perpendicular, it basically cuts the base into half. So this is 15 and 15 now. And then using Pythagoras, you can easily figure out this height. 8 squared plus 15 squared is equal to 25 squared. 
So that means h squared is equal to 625 minus 225. And therefore, that's 400. So h is going to be the square root of that, which is 20. So this is 20. In a very similar way, this perpendicular cuts that into halves. So this is 20 and 20. And if this is, say, h2, in the very same way, we can figure out what is h2 using Pythagoras. h2 squared plus 20 squared is going to be equal to 25 squared. So that's 625 minus 400 is equal to h2 squared. So that's 225 is equal to h2 squared. And if you take the square root, you get h2 is equal to 15. So this is 15 right here. So now we look at the areas. Area of A is 1 half base times height. The base is 30 and the height is 20. So that is 10 times 30, which is 300. B, the area is also 1 half base times height. The base is 40 and the height is 15. So that is 20 times 15, also 300. So that means A is equal to B. So of these, the ratio, or the equation rather, that is valid is C for number 16. Let W, X, Y, and Z be whole numbers if 2 to the W times 3 to the X times 5 to the Y times 7 to the Z is 588. Eight, then what does 2W plus 3X plus 5Y plus 7Z equal? 2 to the power of w, 3 to the power of x, times 5 to the power of y, times 7 to the power of z, is equal to 588. So obviously we have to break up 588 into its prime factors. And if you do, you get 2 times 2 times 3 times 7 times 7. And this can be grouped as 2 to the power of 2 times 3 to the power of 1 times 7 to the power of 2. And that is 2 to the power of w, 3 to the power of x, 5 to the power of y, 7 to the power of z. So matching these exponents, that means that w must be 2, x must be 1, y, there is no y on the other side, so that's 0, and z must be 2, right? Because this w has to be the same as this, x is the same as that, there is no y, so y is 0, and z is the same as that. So now they want us to figure out 2 times w plus 3 times x plus 5 times y plus 7 times z. So plug in these numbers. We got 2 times 2 plus 3 times 1 plus 5 times 0 plus 7 times 2, like that. And that means this is going to be 4 plus 3 plus 0 plus 14 and that is 21. So number 17, the answer is A. A fair six-sided die is rolled twice. What is the probability that the first number that comes up is greater than or equal to the second number? So it's 6 times 6, right? We have two possible um, outcomes. The first die, and there's 1 through 6. So there's six possible numbers. And the second die, same thing, six possible numbers. So six times six, 36 possible outcomes. And there's, since 36 is not that many, we can just write them all out. So the first die could have a one, second die could have a one, first die could be one, second die could be th two, and so on. One, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. So I'll just write them all out. So we have to figure out which ones are such that the first number is greater than or equal to the second number. Well, I'll just circle the ones that fit that criteria. That one, these two, these three, these four, these five, and then all of the last column, where the first number is either greater than or equal to the second number. So how many of these are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21 out of the total, which was 36. So that's the probability. And in lowest terms, divide top and bottom by 3, and you get 7 over 12. 
So number 18, the answer is D. How many rectangles are in this figure? Okay, so we've got to count and be careful because the answer choices are very close to each other. So if you miss one, you get the question wrong. Instead of sort of circling this, let's label all of these. So we got A here, just the regions. Um, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Yeah, I think those are all the regions. Okay, so let's talk about it, this. The first three are the most obvious ones, right? The biggest ones. So this one, which is A, B, C, D. And then this one, which is the biggest one, also one of the biggest ones. And that one would be, in terms of our lettering, D, C, E, F. And then, of course, this big one right here. And that one is B, C, F, G. Okay. So we got three for sure, but then, obviously, there's several more. So let's see. This one, that would be one, so that's just D. This one, that's just C. And then those two together, that would make a rectangle, D plus C. And then, let's see here, this one down here, that one F. And then these two, those two together, C plus F. Okay, so how many do I have so far? Five, right? Okay, any more? Well, this one, just that one, B plus C. And then in a very similar way, that one down there, F plus G. Any more? Any more? And I think this one that you cut, that one also. So that's D plus E. So how many do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I think that's it. So number 19, the answer is D. Quadrilateral ABCD is a trapezoid. AD is 15, AB is 50, BC is 20, and the altitude is 12. What is the area of the trapezoid? So the first thing to do is draw these perpendiculars down like that. And immediately, I hope you can notice that since that is 50, this is also going to be 50. So write 50 here. And then we know that since top to bottom is 12, these altitudes will also be 12, like that. So we can easily figure out that distance and that distance using Pythagoras since these are right angles. So this distance right here, we can just call that x. x squared plus 12 squared is 15 squared. So that means you got 225 minus 144 is x squared. And that is 81. So x, therefore, is equal to 9. So this is 9. In a very similar way, we can figure out this distance, call it y. So that means y squared plus 12 squared is equal to 20 squared. So y squared is equal to 400 minus 144. And y squared, therefore, will be 256. And that means y is equal to 16. So that is 16. So the area of this trapezoid is this side plus this whole side. So that's 50 plus 50 plus 9 plus 16 is 75. And then you have to divide that by 2 and then multiply by the height. And the height is 12. So this looks like 125 times 12 divided by 2, which is 6. And therefore, that's going to be 750. So number 20, the answer is D.